Thank you guys for coming tonight. Obviously, a uh, practice number 15, spring ball, uh, coming to a conclusion. But what a great night to do it. Uh, the weather cooperated with us. So grateful for those fans that showed up. I know a lot of people were uh, initially worried about the weather, but uh, uh, awesome for our Tiger faithful that showed up. And uh, the Highland 100 members are out there cooking in the rain all day, the, the wonderful barbecue that our players get to enjoy. But uh, a great night for football. I was pleased with the way spring ball went. Uh, a lot of ebbs and flows. It was fun, though, to end it in a blue-gray game. And I think that's important. You know, it's something we hadn't done here since I've been here. And uh, to be able to do it in that form and fashion was fun. And uh, I think our players appreciate it. I mean, you got guys that are normally getting, you know, third third uh, string reps at left tackle, going next to the left guard, starting left guard, and, and vice versa. So that was a lot of fun to get out there and compete. I still got a lot of work to do. Uh, that's the nature of the game. The guys are going to finish up. Uh, with their academics these next two weeks and do well in their exams. They're going to get a little bit of downtime and then come back for summer training. But excited about this 2023 football team and uh, everything that comes with it. But again, thank you for the fans that showed up and uh, grateful for all their support and looking forward to a bright future with our uh, team and everything that goes along with it. Right, you guys talked about the mere speed of spring ball. I mean, how are going to be able to kind of put down with the fans today? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's something that, Frank, we've talked about, you know, all spring and even, you know, the addition, you'd never know what he was. But he was one of those guys you bring in the transfer world that you were able to see what he was capable of on tape, on game film. And then you're able to bring it in. And, and I think it's unique for the fans to see. I can talk about all I want. And if it doesn't show up on the field, it doesn't matter. So uh, it was great. Obviously, uh, he's going to continue to work to improve his game. But uh, that was a flash of hopefully things to come for the season for him. Yeah, Harold Nash is a great young man. He, you know, he's an engineering major. Um, he's uh, one of the smartest guys in the room every day. He comes into our building, and he's phenomenal. Just a guy that's done it the right way, that works his tail off, and that cares. You know, he's most of his role has been on special teams. But to come out and get a pair of picks, just proud of him. Uh, he's done a great job all spring, and continues to be uh, find ways to make plays for us, um, and, and just proud of his efforts. And he's a great all the way round young man, and uh, glad he's here with us. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard. To, it's always hard to judge because there's one time I looked out there and I said, well, OK, this will be interesting. Like I said earlier, right, especially up front, you're going to sit there and say, OK, the old line when you're, you got a guy that's never played next to another guy, that was some of the rotational stuff that went in there. And then I'm sure there's some guys in the backfield of the yard, so they're saying, who the heck was that? Um, but it was pleased with it. I, like I always said, you never want to see one unit take advantage of the other. But obviously, in these type of environments, I expected the defense to come out a little bit stronger. Um, obviously, there's things that they, both sides of the ball need to clean up. Uh, but you know, tonight, it was, it was just more of an, a deal to get out there and make sure everybody got plenty of reps, uh, which they did. Uh, but I thought the defense obviously played the better game, uh, obviously with the takeaways and some tackle for losses. So uh, we know we got to shore things up. And part of you know being able to play well in offense is continuity up front with the offensive line. Um, you know, not the rotation of having different quarterbacks going in is hard for an offense to get into rhythm. But that's what tonight was all about, just seeing, uh, you know, get, letting guys go to test their skill set. Um, but as a cohesive unit um, on both sides, right, blue and gray defense, I thought they obviously had the better night. Brian, do you feel like uh, just along with having, I guess, like uh, a melting pot, for the lack of a better term out there, do you think that was like a big, a good building uh, experience for all the players, you know, that might not be as familiar with one another? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, we're – and I've, I've talked about it even on the radio yesterday, is college football is a constant uh, influx of roster change, right, for lack of a better term. 35% roster turnover. I, I think after this most recent transfer portal window, they're expecting anywhere almost to close to 40% roster turnover on every college football team. And so now all of a sudden you've you got new faces, and now all of a sudden they're, they're just put in a different spot. So I do think it is good. Um, you know, it just gives everybody a unique opportunity. And I think we, we've been talking about – you know, building continuity, building leadership. Um, you know, coaches use the word buzzword, buzzwords like culture and teamwork and all that stuff. But I think that's how you build it. And variations like this, putting them on separate teams, allowing them to kind of be on the sideline next to a guy, rooting against a, a guy that they lined up against or next to all spring ball. So um, I think it was, it was a fun, it was a good environment for the, the crowd. You know, sometimes you just go out there and say, okay, one offense first, one defense. And then also people's feelings get hurt. I'm not, I'm not a fool. I know the transfer portal window is still open. And so, hey, there, there are no first, second, or third string. Everybody got to go play and have fun. And how do you grade Tevin as to uh, uh, you know, 
Yep. Yeah, how, how you the pass? Like, this is maturity. Yeah. You know, Tevin's got phenomenal arm strength. And, you know, did he throw a couple interceptions tonight? Yes. Um, but I think Tevin's growth has been phenomenal this spring. He's a smart, hardworking young man. And, you know, sometimes when you throw an interception, oh, he's taking steps backwards. No, he understands. He can step right away and say, yeah, coach, that was, I, saw, I thought it was a cover three. And then they rolled into a two trap and the safety, and, you know, bit the curl and I didn't. Great. He's able to process things very, very well. So he's taking um, – jumps leaps and bounds with what he's able to do on the football field we've got great confidence in him and uh just please you know he's one of those guys that he's gonna he'll be watching the film here in 30 minutes and saying you know text and what do you think about this how can i get better at that and that's what makes that young man so special i'm really glad he's part of our our program and uh, he's got a bright future with us as well Yeah, we've we've said it all along, right? The last we know last year and really last year's running game wasn't what exactly we wanted to, and we don't want to be running back by committee. But again, like you said, we get to see some of these guys step up. Um, we know Blake Watson, the transfer mode, you wasn't able to play tonight due to injury. Um, Brandon Thomas is still out due to injury all spring, and you look and, and say, okay, well, what else? And you know, Jay Ducker is a guy that we've been able to do some stuff with. Sutton Smith showed his ability. You know, Bull Hargrove was able to, you know, show some of his flashiness. We were using Zach Switzer towards the end, changed chairs, the numbers to go and get some running back stuff, even though he's been a wide receiver all spring. Um, so, look, it's uh, good to see get a mix of those guys. I think we're going to be certainly much uh, more productive in the running back position. And we got, you know, find our, our three guys, two to three guys that we can really hang our hat on and move forward with the season. Yeah, it is interesting, you know, to sit there and think this is be the last time we get to spring like this. And that and that's a great thing that it's, you know, the news was absolutely phenomenal. What a, a great day for the city of Memphis, uh, for our football program, and for everybody that's been involved. And, you know, I want to take time to thank everybody that was involved from the city, from the state legislation, to the people, hardworking people at the University of Memphis that poured into this thing to make it happen. And, and really grateful and appreciative. Um, it's going to be absolutely phenomenal i mean not only is it just going to be a beautiful structure that we're going to continue to add to this historic building um but it's just going to mean so much to to our football program and to the fans that well deserve a a, a better place to hopefully watch a wonderful product and so i mean I, i've had a smile on my face since it occurred um we got a lot of work to do between now and then and it's you know it's a two-year project uh, to say the least right anytime you put that type of money anything but it's okay. I, I hope that, you know, I don't care if we're doing the spring game next year at the uh, indoor practice facility and bring, you know, next year we can't, nobody can complain about the weather. Let's get 15,000 fans in that thing as long as they're working on the stadium. So, uh, tremendous news. Again, grateful for the opportunity to be able to do so and all those people that put the effort in to get this done. Um, but yeah, it's, it is unique to sit there and think about it, you know. Um, but I'll be here with a shovel and a hard hat helping with the construction and moving, moving as best we can. So at least it's all said and done for, uh, the start of, now I know there's going to be some temporary stuff that goes on, um, but you know when it's all said and done, we'll, we'll all be very, very excited. But wonderful news moving forward. Yeah, I do think that's what I was saying earlier, Terry. I think that's the hardest position, right? Like you, all of a sudden, the starting left tackle is next to the third string left guard, and it's hard to get the continuity to flow. I mean, we literally had six different guys snap the football tonight. I mean, it, it, it's, it, that's the thing I knew tonight. Like anybody, if you talk to Seth, you're like he'll tell you, man, the offensive line's really getting better and better and better throughout spring. But then all of a sudden you mix them tonight like you did. It's hard for anybody. Um, and I knew that that would be one of the things that we would um, see maybe a little bit different, right? It, when you rotate three deep at uh, defensive line, right, and you're rotating 10 guys in a practice and that guy can be that guy. But then at O-line, you normally don't do that. Um, I knew the continuity of up front today, tonight would be a little bit different, but uh, that's okay. You almost have to look at the individual techniques um, and make sure that they're on point with at least with the calls and all that stuff. Brian, this is, this is the last time we'll see you before the NFL draft. Memphis has, has a pretty long streak going on. Uh, hopefully, Quindell continues that. What does that say just about the, the stability of, of the, the evaluation of players and being able to turn them into pros? 
Yeah, I think that's part of it. You look at you know nine straight years with draft picks, and um, it correlates right with nine straight bowl games, and what we've been able to do. And a lot of the guys that come here and got drafted weren't highly recruited guys. I go back and look: Calvin Austin, walk on; Anthony Miller, walk on; Quendell Johnson. Um, yeah, I don't know if he was even a two-star, you know, but came here and was developed and, and, and did things at a high level. And you look at some of those guys. I mean, even Paxton Lynch, who was a first-round quarterback taken from here, right, wasn't even uh, – I mean, I think Memphis may have been his only Division One offer. Um, and we've we got a, a slew of guys that are NFL talent on our team right now. Um, but I think that's what we take pride in, is being able to develop young men here. And a lot of programs are now just saying, well, we'll figure it out. But it's – I think that's the continuity of me. Also, I don't take any of the credit, but just being here for that long, you get to see that development actually does care, and it's important here. And we got phenomenal coaching staff, but the, the willingness of the players to work and the, the, the Memphis program is what separates, I think, us from every other program. Because everybody's got guys and go get a four-star, five-star, a zero-star guy. But if, if they develop and they work here, and I think that's what's happened, they know that success is out there for them. You know, and uh, Quindell Johnson's a guy that – I mean, look at it. everybody said, well, he didn't get invited to the combine because maybe he wasn't fast enough. And then on my stopwatch runs a four four nine. I mean, so shame on those people that just pegged him saying he wasn't fast enough. I mean, led the conference interceptions. Um, we know the draft picks come from anywhere. So we take a lot of pride in that. Um, I hope all of our guys have the opportunity to play in the NFL in the future. And it does mean a lot to this program. And if it happens, great. If it doesn't, well, guess what? We got a slew of guys that are, you know, they were draft pick type guys uh, on our roster will continue to develop and that's important to us.